intention for this talk, I'm going to be talking about neural Lyme and clinical practice, uh, is really for you not to become experts, but just to know that this stuff exists, that there's a controversy there, and that there are some people who really dedicate their career treating this. Um, I particularly, is this me? Is this me? Yes? <laughs> okay, I'll hold it. Um, uh, I learned uh, about Lyme from my patients and then uh, followed by spending over a year shadowing Dr. Charles Ray Jones, who's in his 90s but still practices. Um, and then I wish that I heard uh, talks like I did today, the first time I attended an ILET conference, because uh, to concur with Tom, my first experience with learning about Lyme was completely overwhelming as it may be for you guys, because it is very complicated. So if you can just kind of have it on your radar, uh, that would be amazing uh, if that's going to be the takeaway uh, from today. I'll start with talking about a couple of cases, um, the diagnostic dilemma that's Lyme, um, a little bit about neural Lyme and the symptoms, some testing and some treatment as well. Uh, so I'll start with a 41-year-old neurosurgeon who started experiencing floaters um, in his vision, particularly when he was operating in the micro with the microscope, um, and he couldn't um, proceed with the surgeries, and he went around to various physicians. He was obviously uh, part of a, a big clinical practice in a hospital, and he went to see various neurologists and optometrists and ophthalmologists, and everybody was kind of um, brushing him off and saying, we can't see anything, everything looks okay, you're probably just anxious and overworked. Um, he did have um, intact visual acuity and normal fundoscopic exam. So he's had the slew, right? He's a neurosurgeon, so he knows MRI, MRA, CTA. And one day, he tells me this story, he was actually um, in the sort of in the hallway, in the doorway of one of his, the, the third surgeon that he's seen and the third neurologist that he's seen, and everything's normal. He's like, go home. He's like, can I have an angiogram? He knew to ask for that because he actually performs them. Um, and that uh, actually was abnormal. Um, his angiogram did show vasculitis, particularly of the ophthalmic artery. Um, and then later on, he, this was um, uh, in, on Long Island, and he lives in Connecticut, but works on Long Island. And uh, he was diagnosed with uh, Lyme and Bartonella Hensley. Uh, he did have an elevated ANA initially, but they didn't know what to do with it. And he actually got better with treatment with antibiotics and immunoglobulin treatment. Uh, so his vasculitis um, went away. And his vision fully recovered. Um, this is a case of a 20-year-old woman uh, with complaint of fatigue, joint pain, headaches, um, some uh, behavioral issues with irritability, and she had blurry vision. On physical exam, she actually had a right APD, um, but her, um, uh, the rest of her uh, exam was completely normal. And an MRI, she, did, uh, she was diagnosed with optic neuritis, and uh, after further history, um, there was a lot of vacationing in the Hamptons, um, so we tested her for uh, Bartonella and Lyme, and actually she was also tested positive for Babesia, um, and she was treated with antibiotics and all of her symptoms resolved. No recurrence of her uh, neurologic symptoms and no evidence of MS uh, going forward. This is an interesting case of a 12-year-old boy who presented with various symptoms over the years, uh, with fatigue, bone pain, lots of allergies to foods, um, a trouble getting out of bed, uh, doesn't like to read, but he was a good student academically. And on physical exam, and I'll have a video of this, um, he had opsoclonus myoclonus, and I show mom, and I'm like, what's going on with the eyes right now? And she's like, oh, yeah, he's been doing that for a couple of years. Um, so... <laughs> So um, he also had some weakness on exam. His MRI was normal. EEG was okay. The blood test was positive for Lyme and Bartonella. And I'll tell you how I'm getting all these positive Lyme tests because I use um, specialty labs as well. 
um, and his LP was actually positive for Lyme, and he needed to be treated with both antibiotics and IVIG. His eye findings have now fully resolved. This is actually not him, because when I was put in this presentation, his eyes are normal, but just to... So you see how his eyes are like dancing? This is what the, the patient was doing.